If you want to swim faster, there's a key thing you must do, and that's improve your VO2 max. Recent studies have shown that you can actually improve your VO2 max twice as fast than traditional training if you do this specific type of work. My name is Lucas Siska. I'm a former professional triathlete, NCAA swimmer, and now full-time coach. I have four steps that can build your swim engine like never before. Welcome to the channel. Let's dive in. So what is VO2 max? In simple terms, it's how big is your engine? An endurance athlete like Christian Blumenfeld, Ironman world champion, he has tested a VO2 max above 100, which is just insane. VO2 max is how much oxygen that your body can process into the muscles. So if you have a bigger VO2 max, you're just more of a beast when it comes to sports. And we can actually train it. And I'm gonna show you the four key steps now. Step one is how you train. Now in a landmark study from 2007, there was four key groups tested. And they found that in those groups, the best way to actually improve your VO2 max was, was with a certain type of training. Group one, they did slow, low intensity work three times a week. Group two did medium intensity work three times a week. Medium, you'll find out that that's kind of the no man's land zone. And then group three did short interval work with short rest. And then finally, group four did longer high intensity work with equal rest. So we're talking about work around four minutes long with up to four minutes of rest where they just did easy training to flush out the body in between. Now the study showed that the first two groups almost did nothing to their VO2 max. And in essence, they didn't improve their heart at all almost but the third and fourth groups tremendously in eight weeks made a huge jump in performance and the fourth group did best of all so what can we learn from this that doing four times four minutes is the classic gold standard and if we want to translate this to swimming it depends on if you're elite or a beginner an elite might do four times 400 meters on four minutes rest whereas a beginner might do four times 100 meters on four minutes rest Doing this can boost your VO2 like nothing else. So let's summarize exactly what that workout looks like. You'll do a 10 minute warm up, just gradually building. Then you'll do four short bursts of 25 yards or 20 seconds just to get the heart rate up. And then you'll go into the VO2 max set. And for those elites, that would be four times 400 meters at an effort that is about 90 to 95% max. And then in between, they would just do four minutes of easy swimming and then a 10 minute cool down to flush the body out. This is gonna take you to another level. Step two, how much to do this? Well, if you only swim two to three times a week, you can actually get away with doing it more often. But I wanna make clear right now that doing VO2 max training is not something that you should do with no swim base whatsoever. You need to be training for at least a few weeks or so, just doing nice, easy swimming to kind of lay a foundation before you go into this type of work. But if you swim two to three times a week and you have that base underneath you, you could get away with doing a VO2 max session twice per week because you have time to recover from it. Now, if you swim more, five, six days per week, you need to not do that. You need to maybe follow what's the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of your workouts are just lower intensity and then 20% can be that high intensity work. So maybe if you swim five days a week, just doing one of those swims as the high intensity interval work, and then the rest of them just lower intensity. And you wanna also have this at specific times during your training phase. That's why it's important to have a coach. I have my athletes in a specific system and we train VO2 at certain times during the year for maximum performance. Now we've reached step three. When do you train VO2 max? Now, this is where it gets kind of complicated, but hold tight, I'm gonna simplify it for you. This is the beauty of having a training system. One of the biggest keys to messing up your swim training is just random training. You have to have scheduled systematic workouts at certain times so that your body can adapt, rest, and recover, and then do it again. This creates consistency 
and training with the system has actually been shown to improve your swimming twice as fast. Now, another tool that can improve your swimming in the modern era very fast, and actually there's studies right now that this is a tool that can improve that twice as fast, another two times faster, and that is training according to HRV. What does HRV stand for? It stands for heart rate variability. In simple terms, that means how much time is in between each of your heartbeats. If there's a longer time, that means the heart rate variability is high, and that means you're ready to train. Now, if it's, if it's short and your heartbeat is beating quite fast, it's your body's under stress. You know, the heart, the HRV is low. That means you need to rest. And now people are using smart devices like uh, Whoop, Aura Ring, smart watches that they're, they're using that at night and they are testing their HRV constantly. Now my wife is a data freak like this and she's constantly watching her HRV. Being a professional former runner, she knows that HRV training can boost her performance. Now when she has a higher HRV, we know that we can go out there and train her hard. But when it's low, sometimes that hard training needs to be pushed another day. For example, if you have a system and you have a key day where you wanna crush VO2 on a Tuesday, then on Wednesday you were planning to just have low intensity work, but you wake up on a Tuesday and that HRV is low. Well, guess what you can do? You can just move that Tuesday session to the Wednesday and push everything back a day. And it's been shown that when you do this, you can actually boost performance much quicker. It's amazing what we can do these days with science and technology. And guys, if you wanna know your true swim potential in this moment, I want you to take my quiz and we'll give you a score to let you know. Look in the comments below, click the link and find out. Now we've reached step four, my favorite part, morphing your body into a swimmer's body. Why is this important? Well, think of it this way. If you have a, an engine that's been maxed out with a higher VO2, but you put that engine into a Volkswagen Beetle, it's not gonna go that fast. We need to put that engine into a body that looks like a Corvette or a Ferrari. It's gonna be much more efficient and much faster. Same thing with our human body. We've gotta make ourselves more swim fast and sleek. And we can do that in three steps. Everybody can do this. No matter what state you're in right now, you can elevate your swim body. Step one, achieving maximum buoyancy with swim specific body position. Step two is simple head adjustment. Step three is increasing your swim flexibility. Now on that step, I have a special tool that can take us to another level there. Now, if you suffer from stiff and rigid shoulders, which is crucial when it comes to maximizing your swim potential, because if you're stiff and rigid in the water, you cannot put your arm or shoulder in the correct position to optimize it. One thing that I highly recommend for my swimmers is to use the viral physiotherapist, Bob and Brad, who developed a special massage gun that has heat and cold options. If you can use the heat option to massage around your shoulder, to get this stretch deeper. That heat increases blood flow, and then when you go to stretch, you can put your arms into the position you need so that you can achieve that swim flexibility. And then of course, you can use the cold option after swims so that you can recover your body quicker. The massage gun is super strong, it's lightweight, and it has five different speeds and modes. Not to mention, it has several different attachments that you can use that can aid in blood flow and recovery. Now these days, I'm more into running, and I'm using the, the massage gun to help me before runs and prevent injury, because for those of you who run, you know that running is the sport that creates a lot of injuries if you're not careful. I use the massage gun before runs with the heat option to increase that blood flow so that my muscles are nice and loose before running. And then after runs, I like to use the cold option and that way I can get the inflammation out of my legs quicker. Not to mention that massage action that the, that the gun possesses really helps increase muscle recovery. And finally, for those of my swimmers who have the gun, I tell them to use the gun before they go to bed at night because I want all my swimmers to do swim flexibility stretches at night before they go to bed. And when they use the gun, they can increase the depth of how deep they can stretch. I tell them to use the heat option and then use it around the muscles that they're trying to go deeper on. It really aids in increasing that swim flexibility quicker. I can't recommend it enough. And if you want one for yourself, check the link in the description. 
Now, step one, the easiest way to explain this is that all you need to do when swimming freestyle is to have your body maximally extended at all times. I have several videos teaching you how to do this and I'll link one at the end of the video. Step two, head position is huge when it comes to swimming efficiently. We don't wanna be like this when we swim having full frontal drag. We don't wanna be like this because this also causes drag. The perfect position is to have your eyes gazing at a 45 degree angle. That way we're most aerodynamic. But the problem is, even if you know this, you can't get in that position if you don't have a swim flexible neck. That's why step three is so important. Now step three is my most favorite step of these three because it's about increasing your swim flexibility. If you have stiff and rigid shoulders and you try to go for the catch, for example, you can't even catch correctly because your shoulders are stiff and stuck out here. You have to be able to bring that shoulder in close proximity to your head. When you can get that shoulder here, that's when you can get the high elbow, that's when you can catch the most amount of water. It's not complicated, you just need to do three specific swim stretches every time you swim, after your swim, and then for a few minutes before bed every night. If you do this consistently, you will improve your swim flexibility and be able to pull much more water and just swim much more efficiently. If you wanna see how to do that, I'll also link another video teaching you how to do this. Now, VO2 max training is not comfortable, it hurts. But when you do it at the right time and follow these four key steps, you can literally take your swimming to another level. Now, those two videos that I mentioned before, talking about maximum buoyancy and how to get swim flexibility, you can find those right here. And remember, I'm Lucas Siska, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.